if you are trying to really boost your VO2 max, high intensity is the way to go, um, but a very big goal. What's up, explorers? Today, we'll determine the best training routine to improve your VO2 max. For that, we went to one of the most renowned clinics for sports medicine. There, we consulted with a medical doctor and a sports scientist. In the last two videos, we already uncovered why VO2 max is crucial for longevity, how it works and different ways you can test it. So today, we'll round things off with part three. Now, there was a really big but you can't do high intensity every day, so uh, your body will also need some rest. But the high intensity is really the, the thing that boosts the VO2 max. We are always trying to get our patients to follow a polarized training, which would be having 10 to 20% of the amount of time that you are doing sports, having this in very high intensities, so over 90% of your VO2 max, or 90% of your maximum heart rate and the other 80% would be as low as your lactate threshold. Lactate threshold? What's that? Your lactate threshold is the point at which lactic acid starts to build at a faster rate than your body can remove it, leading to fatigue eventually. There's an easy way to test for it while exercising. Lactate threshold is at the maximum intensity that you can maintain in a long run, for example, and still hold a good conversation. Or, as Dr. Hoting puts it, If you want to call your mom, yeah, it's a good, yeah, good way to do it, you have the time. Yeah. So mom, expect my call the next time I go running. The doctor prescribed it. <laughs> Kidding aside, wasn't the point of this video to find out how we can improve our view to max? So why is this lactate threshold now suddenly so important? Have you ever heard of marathon world record holder Eliud Kipchoge? He is the first human to run a marathon below two hours and for that he averaged a pace of over 21 kilometers per hour. Or for our American explorers, that's 13 miles per hour. Many people don't even sprint that fast. And that's because his lactate threshold is just beyond the moon. So, individuals that have a high lactate threshold can steadily perform at a higher percentage of their VO2 max and hence simply work longer at higher intensities before fatigue. To round this off, let's do a little experiment. Imagine your VO2 max would be this jar and the liquid inside it represents the lactate threshold. Now, as your lactate threshold increases, you can see that it's limited by the size of the jar. So for maximum performance and longevity results, we would want to increase our jar size for VO2 max and work on filling it up as much as possible. And for that, our friends at Charité highly recommend polarized training. Okay, and this would mean that if I'm doing five hours of training each week, then I would be spending four hours or 80% at low intensity in a way that I can keep up a conversation and one hour at high intensity with or close to maximum heart rate or power. Exactly. And if you have a fitness tracker of some sort, you can also work with heart rate zones for polarized training. Using heart rate zones, low intensity at lactate threshold would correspond to zone two training. So that's 60 to 70% of your maximum heart rate. And high intensity would correspond to zone five training or above 90% of your maximum heart rate. And in case you're wondering how you can find out what your maximum heart rate is without doing a sophisticated test, there's a good formula. Take 220 minus your age and that will give you maximum heart rate. For me, that would be 189. <laughs> okay, got it. But what kind of exercises should I optimally do in polarized training? For your low intensity training, any exercise where you can maintain a steady heart rate and pace is sound. This could be walking, running, cycling or swimming. But then it's very important that for maximum benefits, you actually spend above 45 minutes, better even 60 to 75 minutes doing zone two training in one session. For your high intensity training, there's many different protocols, but let's see what the doctor said. A standard protocol, for example, would be the four times four, okay. where you would try to warm up and then have four times four minutes 
of riding at 171 roundabout plus mm -hmm. minus maybe three beats per minute with four minutes of rest in between okay. and then a cool down afterwards so this would be like the basic standard for high intensity workout that really boosts your um, your vo2 max okay now that we got our results and trainings plan it's time to round off our three-part VO2 Max series. I have learned more than I would have ever imagined before making this video. And together with the medical team at Charité, I agreed to do a little experiment. I will now commit myself to doing the polarized training protocol over the next three months, after which I'll get back to Charité and retest my VO2 Max. And then we'll see if I was able to improve it. But adopting the right nutrition protocol that suits your training plan is just as important. And to find out which nutrition protocol I had great experiences with, check out this video here. Thanks for watching. If you want to join the quest, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe.